So in this video, I'm going to teach you guys about parallax occlusion mapping. So we're going to use parallax occlusion mapping to make displacement inside Unreal Engine 5. What you're seeing right now is totally fake. The geometry is not displaced. This displacement is at a shader level. The best part is that parallax occlusion mapping is very easy to set up. It takes just five minutes. Okay, so before we start with the video, I would like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Multiplatform. Multiplatform is a leading digital news platform where you can find news articles, professional guides, experts opinions on topics like game development, animation, cinematics. So for example, if you want all the latest news on Unreal Engine 5, Multiplatform is the best way to keep yourself updated. So this is pretty cool. I'm going to leave a link down in the description. Do check them out. Okay, so let's start with the video. So first off, we need to import our textures. We need four texture maps, the color, the height, which is the displacement, the normal map and the roughness map. You can do so by right clicking right here and importing those textures. After importing our textures, let's make a material. Open the material. So we're going to add a parallax occlusion mapping node right here. So this node has a lot of different inputs and settings. So now let's configure all of them. So first we need to add a height map right there. So add your height map into the height map slot. You will notice that uh, this requires a texture object. So we need to convert this texture into a texture object. Next we have the height map ratio. So this is the displacement strength. So I'm going to add a scalar parameter and connect it right there. Next we have the minimum steps and the maximum steps. These are quality steps. So these are quality settings. So we are going to add a scalar parameter for that as well. And now you can add two parameters here, but I'm going to add only one parameter for both of them. Now after that's done, we need to specify the height map channel. So I'm going to add a vector 4 and a height map texture is like a grayscale texture. So all the information is stored in the red channel. So we are going to use the red channel for that. After that, we have the shadow and the light options. So for the render shadows, I'm going to add a static bool. So this is like a true or false and we are going to render shadows. Next, we have the light vector. So this is the light direction. We need to specify the sunlight direction. So if you're using a sky atmosphere system, which you are, we can just add this node, the sky atmosphere light direction. After that, we have the shadow steps. This is the shadow quality. You can add a scalar parameter to control that. Okay, so that's all that you need to do for now. Now let's add the color, the normal and the roughness textures. Connect the roughness and the normal into the appropriate slots. Connect the UV coordinates as well. And for the color right here, we are going to do something different. So by default, the object which has like the parallax occlusion mapping shader will not receive shadows. So we need to calculate the shadows manually. So for that, I'm going to add a linear interpolation node and connect the shadow into the alpha. This will give me a shadow mask. And next I'm going to add a multiply and just darken the diffuse color texture and connect it into the B slot. So the color of our shadow is going to be like a darker version of the diffuse map. After that, you can connect this into the base color. And lastly, you get that displacement. You need to connect the pixel depth offset. Okay, now let's test this out. So let's add a plane. And you can apply the material. Just apply the material. And there we go. We have some displacement going on. It looks good. But you'll notice that we have like a glitch or uh, like a shadow glitch right you can easily fix this by turning off cast shadows so it's not necessary that you use virtual uh, like textures and virtual height field mesh 
and all of those like complex things i mean those are not complicated but it requires a lot of time to like set those up this is a way easier and a simpler way again this has its drawbacks but when it comes to the simplicity and the performance and the optimization this is one of the best ways for doing displacement and as you can see this is not displacing the geometry so we don't need to use nanite on these meshes okay so i hope you learned a lot in this video if you did please leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more videos like this check out my patreon page and yeah that's it i'm going to see you guys in the next video